Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back. You're watching Full Take. So it's been long time I didn't create videos for the OnePlus Nord 2. But today we came back with another update for the Android 13 based custom ROM called as Project Elixir. We already created some videos for the old initial build of Project Elixir. You can check that from the iCard. But today we will check out this new update, its performance, CPU throttling stability, new features and finally I discussed some bugs with my final verdict. Is it worth to use this custom ROM on OnePlus Nord 2 or not? So watch the video till the end. Flashing is same as we did previously. You must be on the Oxonus A20 with the TWRP supporting Android 13 ROMs installed on your device. If you are using the different TWRP then first flash the TWRP given under the video description using the fastboot. You can check the video given an iCard as a reference. Download the ROM zip file then place it in the internal storage of your phone. Put your phone in a TWRP, tap install, select the ROM zip file. Once done, tap wipe and select format data and reboot to the system. So everything is done here. Now without further ado, let's get started. On the new adventure. Phone booted to the Project Elixir custom ROM boot animation. Let's complete the setup of the device and we will check what's new gets in this update. ROM has the quick step launcher. If you go to the about phone, on the top we get the device picture with the currently running home screen wallpaper. Below it's mentioned that this is the official build supported by the developer Sakil Mondal. Android version is 13 with the same material clock register egg. Project Elixir version is 3.5. ROM comes with the kernel version 4.14.302, built out with the latest Proton Clang toolchain 13. So ROM is synchronized with all the latest sources as compared to the stock Oxygen OS. Stock Oxygen OS is still on C12 with the old security patches. So first we will check out the performance of the new ROM. ROM is super smooth, everything is gliding on the fingertips. All the applications are running on the 90Hz rate. If you enable the force 90 hertz setting in the OnePlus setting of the device, every application including the camera working on the 90 hertz refresh rate, I have seen in the OnePlus 9RT and nothing phone one, I didn't got the force 120 hertz in the camera application. When I ran the Geekbench, I got the score of 859 and 3045 for the single and the multi core respectively. If you check the old update results, there we got the 839 and 3048 which is almost same like the current build. Next I did the Hulkan graphics API test and I got the score of 4486 while for the old build we got the 4310. Slight improvement has been found for the current ROM. But if you check the results history of the Geekbench from the Hulkan graphics, here it's showing that Nord 2 ranks second place in the result score of OnePlus devices with the score of 4941. But I never got such results on any build of OnePlus Nord 2. So overall custom ROMs giving the nearly same stable performance experience like the stock Oxonus ROM which is good sign of development. Next I did the CPU throttling test to confirm the CPU performance stability at the higher temperatures. We will also compare these results with the stock Oxygen OS. I ran the test for the 5 minutes on the 20 threads. During the complete test graph seems stable but with the some minor yellow lines. When I stopped the test I got the score of 91% which is very good score and this score is nearly same as the stock Oxygenos ROMs. There I always got the score of 89 to 94% except on the last build from the C10 to C12 which has very bad results. You can check the C10 results I have given the video link of that update under the video description. While testing the device I felt the device more warmer near the camera area. So I checked the CPU temperature and it found 42 to 44 degrees Celsius. So you can say that this custom ROM having the proper CPU governors which are managing the CPU temperature in the CPU intensive task and maintaining the device performance stability. I did the complete checkup of all the basic functions like the Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi hotspot, Bluetooth with the HD Auto Codex, NFC, GPS, Auto Brightness, fingerprint with the face unlock all are working absolutely fine. VoLT incoming and outgoing calls are working fine with the call recording function. Call records will be found under the record recording folder of the file manager. 5G networks are also supporting here along with the Wi-Fi calling setting. Next I did the all the sensor tests, everything is like the accelerometer, proximity, magnetometer, compass, gyroscope, barometer, all are seems fine. Only light sensor is shown issues like we've seen in the old videos, 
but the auto brightness is working fine it's quite accurate other important things like the ear proximity microphone ear speakers flashlight multi-touch and display has no issues at all the most important part is the safety net rom is passing the safety net like old builds so no worry about the banking applications wide wine is on l1 so you can stream the netflix and the amazon prime at the full hd resolution rom storage is encrypted so our data is safe so all the important security related things are maintained in the rom google photos application has the unlimited photos backup working now let's check out the camera section rom has the google co camera application by the default and now it's added with the more working features as compared to the old builds like it has the different filter modes but it's not working portrait mode is available and it's working wide angle modes are available and working good it has the translate feature in build front camera has the snapchat emojis camera now added with the hdr and night modes so this application is pretty useful but still it lacks most of the features like the gcam i installed the latest build of gcam mgc build here we guess the nightscape portrait mode for the both the front and the back camera are working fine but sadly video recording did not have the slow motion available but the time lapse is working good all the wide angle camera modes are working panorama and the photo sphere modes are available and working surprisingly 4k 60 fps recording is now working here for photos enhancement you guess the hdr plus and the photo retouching both are working very good so camera section is pretty improved this time and useful as compared to the old builds now it's time to show you some features that were not present in the old initial build under the main setting there is a tab called as the enhance which has all the customizations well arranged in the different tabs under the themes option you guess the custom themes like the black and the vivid monet both are giving amazing pure black look to your device who gets the bunch of the headlines and the body font system icon packs signal and the wi-fi icons next under the lock screen tab who gets the double tap to sleep toggle this setting also available under the display setting and is working very good who gets the different under display fingerprint icons and the animation you can check some of them as on the screen In the quick setting option there is a different QS style available like the classic outlying rectangle all are giving different look to the QS panel like the QS panel who gets the setting for the brightness slider with the outline style look fluid user interface with the background transparency slider is available here which helps to give the transparent rectangular QS style which looks cool there is a toggle available called as the blur media background notifications along with the slider under the gesture setting all the gesture settings are gathered together which are already available in the main setting miscellaneous settings has the different options like here you guess the advanced restart setting who can increase or reduce the volume steps for the all the ringer modes instead of their default levels new power menu animation tab available here which has the different animation we can check out some of them under the system setting who gets the one plus setting we already seen this advanced tab in the old videos still we'll see the quick overview here we get the smart charging to limit the charging of the phone which help us to save the battery we also get the high brightness mode toggle force 90 hertz toggle available here which we already seen in the performance section vibration strain control setting is available as per my opinion use the low levels of vibrations which will give us the similar experience of haptics like the Oxynos ROM. Other custom features are available under the display setting like the color modes, natural, adaptive, boosted, etc. Ambient pocket mode is available under the display which help us to save the battery while using the ambient display. In the quick step launcher home setting, we get the themed icon for the app drawer icons. We can change the background transparency or presence panel using the transparency slider. We can also add the different options for the recent panel like the screenshot, lock applications, lens and the clear all. So we did the in-depth preview of the ROM in the all the segments. Now it's time to check the bugs. Like all the old Android 13 ROMs, this ROM also didn't have the working OnePlus Alert slider. Under the miscellaneous setting of the launcher, we get the taskbar toggle, 
but it's actually not working good even after toggling on and off button it's still not activated instantly we can't able to minimize it by the long pressing the edges of the screen wafo 4 droid is available and it's only working for the speaker mode not works for the bluetooth devices ok google setting is not working it's showing the error of language is not supported but we can use the voice assistant by swiping the bottom corners of the screen under the lock screen media cover art setting is available but it has no blur effect is working on the lock screen while playing the media no screen of animations are working these are only bugs i found except these no other major issues are there rom is pretty stable in terms of performance daily activities and it has lots of amazing customizations battery drain is also seems negligible still i will report the full battery usage after two days as per my opinion this custom rom is my second favorite custom rom after pixel experience and i definitely recommend you to try this rom that is for today guys if you think this video helped you then please do like share subscribe and press the bell icon for the notifications of our upcoming content thanks for watching see you next time take care bye bye